promised, I have prepared a video on the love spell that we talked about on the daily. If you guys were on, I'm, uh, you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. If you weren't, please join me for the daily. Monday through Thursday, I do daily tarot card readings around noon on Instagram. And if you follow me on Instagram at born underscore without underscore boundaries, uh, you'll get the notifications when I go live. But that's Monday through Thursday. I do a daily tarot card reading there. And then on Friday, I do the daily tarot card reading over here on, um, on YouTube. So we talked a little bit about it and I got this really, I think, wide open, very easy to do love spell. It's very basic. It's all white magic. It's got no blood magic. Um, for me, uh, blood magic is very advanced magic. I'm not a Wiccan. I'm not an official witch. I haven't studied that hard to understand uh, how to use those kind of energies. And so I don't do it because, um, you know, novices shouldn't be trying stuff like that. Uh, but this is white magic and it's accessible to all of us. And it really is just a way of connecting with the earth and combining ritual with manifestation to amplify uh, the desires that we have and, and to speak louder to the universe and sort of um, expedite um, those things that we wish to manifest into our lives. And so I found this really lovely book. It's called Witches Brew, Brew Good Spells for Love. And um, I've sort of uh, taken one of the very basic love spells and I have shared it with you. And what you will need is a rose, a long stem rose with thorns on it. So a long stem rose. You will need rose oil. You will need a pink votive candle and you'll need a little pot, like a cauldron to put it in so that the candle will be safe as it burns. And with those three ingredients, you can start your spell. Now, what my friend who designed the tarot card uh, deck that I always use, her name is Laura and she owns Talisman and Cauldron in Derby, Connecticut. And uh, it's a spirituality store. She's um, been practicing for over 25 years and she is a witch. So she um, gave me some really good advice uh, that I want to share with you. And that is whenever you get into spell work, there is preparation that has to be done. You have to, um, she said sometimes she, she prepares six months before for really complex spells. So it's not just throwing stuff together. There's a ritual even before the ritual. And it, it inevitably the magic comes from you. Um, so you have to exact the rituals so that you are focused and that your energy is vibrating where you want it to vibrate to welcome in what you want in your life because ultimately the vibrations speak louder than anything else. And if your vibrations are not aligned to what you want in your life, well, you're going to get what your vibrations are. Okay. So you have to be sure that you've prepared. Now, this particular spell um, asks that you prepare for two days prior to the full moon. It's a very simple preparation, and I'll go through that with you um, on the video. Uh, you'll see I have I have a little video that we're going to attach onto this one. Um, and then on the night of the full moon, there there's a very specific ritual, very basic, simple ritual that you go through. What I wanted to say, each of the two nights before and on the full moon itself, what you should always do before you enter any kind of spell casting is be sure that you cleanse the area so that it's valid balanced it's filled with positivity it's filled with light and that you are protected as you cast now some people will sit in a circle of candles which you can absolutely do um, what I do is I use a sound bell and I use this for every tarot card reading I do before every tarot card reading I cleanse the space by ringing the bell and I give it a high vibrational ring and then I turn it around and give it a more lower vibrational ring to be sure that all the vibrations have been rung and cleared the air, clear the space with that bell to just bring in happy, peaceful vibrations around me. And then I'll be sure that my feet, if you could see right now, my feet are bare. I have no socks or shoes on and I put them on the ground so that I am grounded and I chant I am surrounded by angels protecting me with their love and light. I am surrounded by angels protecting me with their love and light. I am surrounded by angels protecting me with their love and light. 
I am surrounded by angels morning, noon, and night. So I am grounded. My feet are on the ground. Even though I'm three floors up, my feet are planted on my floor barefoot. I have wrung the area. You can also use sage to cleanse the area if you'd like to. I use sound cleansing because a lot of sage like affects me like cigarettes and I, and I start to get <laughs> bronchial infections. No joke. I learned that the hard way. Um, um, and then I, I chant the, I, I just pray. I pray and I make sure that I am focused and feeling really good and really filled with love and light because it is after all love that we're going to be welcoming into our lives. And uh, I noticed because we're in quarantine right now, <laughs> This, this this video will stay on YouTube uh, for as long as YouTube exists, but um, I am recording this during quarantine. So it's the beginning of April of 2020 and everybody is in quarantine, which means a lot of the spirituality stores that easily I would have found a pink candle in or rose oil in, I was not able to access because they were forced to close down. And, and so luckily, uh, Whole Foods and CVS which are open because they sell necessary items. They both carry essential oils and you can find a rose oil at either place. And I was, I was pink votive void. Like I had no pink votives and there was nobody that was selling them. Um, I went all over, nobody had it. So what I did was I took was I took two of my uh, tea light candles uh, that were white because I have them every night. I light them every night and I melted them down and made my own pink candle um, with scented with rose oil right in the candle. And I'm going to go through how I did that with you and then we'll get right into the spell. So what I did was I created a makeshift double boiler because I knew that's what I needed to melt the wax. I took two little votives, all white, pulled out their stems, which is really easy. Just go in the back and yank it out with your finger and see now they're stemless. So I just took those two votives, put it on my makeshift double boiler and melted them down. It was really, really simple. It took maybe three minutes. And then I experimented with trying some food coloring because I bake and rose oil. I took some rose oil because I wanted to add the rose oil to the wax and melted down the wax. And look, at this is me trying to use the food coloring in the wax. It does not work at all. For chemical reasons that I'm too stupid to understand, it was not working. So I had to get creative and luckily, I found three birthday candles lying around, you know, just like birthday candles you buy from the supermarket <laughs> and they were pink. So I threw them in there and that worked perfectly um, to add the pink color that I needed. And the wicks, yeah, I just sort of took them out, took them out, threw them away. Then I added my rose oil. This is still all over the do double boiler. Um, I think it's like medium high heat, mixed it up. And then I took it and I poured it back into the votives, put the stems in. Just a note, I learned the hard way that you have to suspend the wicks or they will fall into the melted wax. I just used bobby pins or bobby, uh, bobby pins, as you can see. Here is my makeshift pink rose oil scented candle. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my rose oil. I got this from um, Whole Foods, which is really convenient that they sell it because, um, you know, we're in quarantine right now and not a lot of places are open. My, my normal uh, spiritual store that I go to it had to close. So it's, it's lucky that Walmart and I think CVS sells it too. I'm just going to take the oil and maybe even put a little bit on my finger. Rub the oil on my finger and rub it on the wick because you're supposed to anoint the wick with the rose oil, rub the rest around. This is the same rose oil that I added to the actual, um, this is the same rose oil that I added to the, the candle itself when I was making the candle itself. And then I have my little 
sort of makeshift cauldron here and I'm just gonna set it down between my rows, which I'm sure to have a thorn on. It's gotta be an authentic thorn from the rose that we're gonna use later. And the bell that we're gonna use later. And I'm just gonna set it down. This is two nights before the full moon. Right now we're working on a full moon in Libra, but you can use any full moon. Um, and uh, I mean, more. what I would suggest actually is a full moon that's more aligned with partnership and love and romance. Um, passion and desire and, and love. You know, love and the heart chakra is a Leo full moon. Um, you could also use Cancerian full moon or Scorpio full moon if you really want like lust and desire and deep passionate, almost obsession, obsessive connection. Um, remember, whatever full moon you're working with really amplifies uh, what you're welcoming into your life. Um, but this is a Libra full moon and the Libra full moon, Libra rules the house of partnerships. And that's really that long-term um, beneficial, mutually beneficial, uh, balanced partnership uh, that I'm welcoming into my life. So this is two days before the Libra full moon that I have uh, made my candle and I have um, anointed the wick like I just did with you right here uh, with rose oil and then um, setting it aside every single night, uh, two nights, I'm sorry, before the full moon. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep them together as companions uh, on my little altar or the table that I do tarot on. And what I'm going to do every single night is light it briefly, light that candle and pray into it and think the thoughts and the desires that I have welcoming, um, using a welcoming mantra, uh, welcoming love into my life. Um, just directing loving energy and loving thoughts into the flame. And then on the night of the full moon, what I will do is I will take this thorn that's on the bottom of my rose And I will probably clip it up to here. So I almost have like a little makeshift pencil. And what I will do then is I will carve love and lust onto the candle because I don't have a specific person that I'm welcoming into my life. In fact, I think love spells work better when you don't, when you just allow the universe to lead you to the partner that is going to be best for you, that it's preparing you for. Um, as uh, they, the universe prepares you, the universe will prepare them. And you just sort of open up your heart. And remember, if it's the person that's in your heart now, if they're the ones that's, that is meant for you, they're the one that will come into your life. So on that candle, what I will write is love and lust because I want both of them in my life and on the night of the full moon after I've carved love and lust into the candle with the thorn from the rose I will whisper over and over I will find true love I will find true love I will find true love um, then I will light the candle and I will ring the bell and I will say I will ring the bell three times and I will say, as this candle begins to burn, a lover true will I earn. As this flame burns ever higher, I will feel my lover's fire. And then I will ring the bell three more times and I will watch the candle burn completely. So that means for the two nights before the full moon, when you burn the candle and you focus the thoughts about those loving, welcoming thoughts into the flame, you can put the flame out afterward. You don't want it to burn fully on the two nights before. That's just preparation. So there's the spell. And I hope that you manifest the love that you desire in your life. Um, the love that you need, not just the love that you want. Um, the love that will bring you to a higher place and make you a better person, make you want to be a better person. Um, a love that will uh, make you grow bigger and fuller. Um, but hoping first that you started out as a complete whole person yourself so that uh, you love yourself first 
in the celebration of the Libra full moon, it is very important for us to remember and be very clear about who we are so we know what we really want so that when we're asking, we can articulate and be very specific and it's not done out of desperation or loneliness or sadness or fear or um, any kind of unbalanced energy, but it comes from a place of self-respect and dignity and wholeness and just inspiration to fill your life up even more and move on and add something that will make your life even better. That's, after all, what relationships are supposed to do. So I love you guys. Please put the comments below. Let me know what you think of this really lovely little spell and enjoy your spell casting. <laughs>